Good morning, Coffee Time Friends. How y'all doing? It's Sunday. Mama's here. Just see her hand. Hey, Mama. Hi. It's Southern Sunday lunchtime, folks. It's coffee time. Uh, I love to come home after church and have a wonderful cup of coffee and just think on what we're having for lunch. <laughs> and get busy. I sort of say, but that don't happen. I get a cup of coffee. I take a cup of sips. And Mama yes. gives me chores. Chore time. We're having fried meatloaf. It's one of our favorites. Come down here to my cutting board. This is my chore board. It says chores right there. So see, I have chores to do. And I'm just cutting up three slices of Texas onion. Vidalia onion comes from Vidalia. This one came from somewhere. I think right now is getting into the season for Vidalias. I'm going to have to find me some because we're, this is my last one. Oh, no. My last okay. sweet Texas onion. Those flat ones, they're so good. So this is the last one we have. Right here, I'm fixing the meatloaf. And I've got one egg I'm putting in. And maybe y'all can see that. Hopefully. Good, get close, Mama. And this is two eggs. y'all know that meatloaf is one of our favorite things so i went ahead and purchased this mccormick's culinary meatloaf seasoning in the big old institutional pack because you can buy those little single packs and in those single packs there's approximately two tablespoons per pack when you buy those i'll just grab this one so if you want to buy the large one and you want to do it break it up into like what a pack would be, just like with y'all's ranch dressing. If you think, well, I don't know how to do a pack. Um, it's two tablespoons approximately per those little packets of brown gravy, meatloaf or whatever. And I've used a good healthy Ooh. amount. So let's put two of those in there. That's a lot, that's a half a cup. That's half a cup, Mama says. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to make it spicy, spicy, spicy. Mm -hmm. Mm, oh, that's a good. I, I may have put another big heap in. No, you better not. I was only joking, Mama. I know how you are. Mm -hmm. This is parsley. Some people think parsley has no benefit just for looks, but it does bring out other flavors. So we'll put a big heaping tablespoon of parsley in there. And you'll see them little green pieces in there. And it makes it mm -mm, and so good. open up the. We're going to try tomatoes in it this time. And this is some fresh ground tricolored black pepper going right in that mix. I love pepper. Mama loves pepper. And we like that tricolor peppercorns really well. I'm just crumbling up a hamburger bun for bread instead of crackers. And a little bit of salt. Salt in there is going to make a big difference. And we love this stuff here. Y'all know that. Southern Secret Onion and Garlic. Just a sprinkle, sprinkle of it. Just about a quarter of a teaspoon. All that garlic and all that flavor goes well with this. And like I said, this is three slices of sweet onion. You can use yellow onion. Any onion. Any onion will work. But there are specific onions for specific flavors. Probably in this, if I had a good yellow onion, I would have used it instead of sweet for two reasons, because I'm running out of sweet onion. And another reason would be the fact that you get a more pungent oniony flavor with a yellow. Don't you, Mama? Mm. It's now, stronger. It's a stronger flavor. White yeah, onion is about the same. Low. Yeah, Mama, why don't you get a small bowl? Oh, I was just going to make a small bowl. Mama's still getting over her red bow, but we've, she's got other old antique Pyrex that we haven't used as much. We've always used it though, haven't we, Mama? Yeah. We love those things. I mean, we love our Tupperware stuff, but sometimes you just want to use what has been used in centuries in your family. I'm not going to drain this. This is just tomato, uh, petite diced tomatoes. And, uh, Going to go right in there. This is going to give us a little bit of chunky tomato in that 
I'm going to have to fix that in the paper bottle. Mama, you're not used to working in a small boat, are you? No, I'm not. Let me get that, it. That may do it for you. So this is the meatloaf. Just stir and fold, stir and fold, just like this. Stir, fold, stir, fold. Bring it back, stir it, fold it. Put this heel in there now. Can y'all see what we're doing? I feel like sometimes, whew, I need a camera person. Yeah. It's hard to do when it's just two of us, though. It's hard to. Uh, you have to multitask a lot. Yeah, it's hard to make sure the camera's always right where it needs to be. And, you can see everything you need to see. I go back and look at the comments sometimes and people's fans, move the camera. And I'm like, I didn't see that, none of that, sorry. There you go, that's absorb us to buy the cheese. <laughs> It'll bind it together, it'll help to absorb as well. That's all it should do. Uh, it stretches your meat. Let's say you kind of cut back a little bit on your cost. If you put a little bread in your hamburger meat or in your meatloaf, it doesn't change the flavor. It stretches it though. You can get at least another patty or so. So if you're cooking for six and you've got the budget for four, put a little lot bread in there. My mommy always put lot bread in her uh, uh, hamburgers. And I thought that's the way you're supposed to fix it. Mama. Same thing with this meatloaf. You know, you've got Maybe you, maybe somebody called, maybe your spouse says, hey, I'm bringing two people over for supper tonight. Is that cool? And you're like, well, sure. Grab the loaf of bread. Put you some more bread in there. That'll stretch your meat. I'll crush that, mama. Unless you want to. Can you crush that? No, I cannot crush that. So this is the meatloaf in the smallest bowl of the world. We don't have any large bowls. Yes, we do. I just didn't think we needed it. This is where I get this from. Y'all see me all the time. People say, John, your boat's too small. Mm-hmm. My mama taught me that. I'm a good teacher, ain't I? We've always done that kind of thing. Just like when you go to the grocery store or you go to the Dollar Tree. How many of y'all are guilty? As I am sometimes. But I about to just give up on it. And I, I just don't even pretend anymore. I think I don't need a buggy. I'm not buying that much stuff. I'm just going to get one of these handy dandy little baskets here. It never works out. For one thing, I'll either buy something that will cause it to be awkward to carry. Or I'll hit something coming around the corner. I might as well just get a cart, a buggy. We call it a buggy here. Have you ever heard of it called a buggy? I might as well just get me a buggy because whether I get one or two things, I'm going to get enough things I'm going to have to have a buggy. Uh, and another thing, if you don't, you got one hand and you're trying to look at things. Give up, folks. Just go ahead and get the buggy. And I can't pick up some things one-handed. Right. We need a little tomato sauce and I'll just pour it over top of that. I think this will be fun. I know if the tomato center will be good. Um, you want, you got a paper plate and I'll make you some patties. I'm just going to scoop it out. You got a scoop? Yeah. Get the scoop. We'll show them our scoopy scoop. So this is meatloaf. You're thinking, what on earth? Now you can loaf this up. Just make a loaf and um, put it in your pan and be done with it. We like ours fried. We make loaf meatloaf all the time and sometimes... This avocado. Oil. avocado oil. This is just a, well, that sign's right there. Whatever scoop. It's chippy on the thing. Is it not on there? Here. Is it not on there somewhere? Wow, well, Mom, it's too cheap. This is not a real expensive one. This is one I've gotten somewhere. Oh. Or something. I don't have it. And you just scoop these in your pan. Now, if you don't have a scoop or you don't want to fool with a scoop, just use a spoon. That works too. Uh, but just scoop these on here. You can put these in muffin tins, however you want to do them. If you're baking it. If you're going to bake them. If you're going to bake meatloaf and you want individual servings and you want that brown around all of it. Muffin tins is wonderful. Muffin tins is great. That may be enough, Mama. 
Why are you going to do the rest of it? Well, we'll have to do two matches. Um, then you'll take, let that fry just a second and then mash that down as you're cooking. But I'm that's thinking. fried meatloaf right there. Two, four, six. Six. You want me to carry that? No, I did it. Well, you grind it like it was heavy. Well, I had it the wrong hand. Mama, if it's heavy. Mama's time is up, I think, today. I um, can't lift over 10 pounds, and that's nowhere near 10 pounds. But, gotta be, you gotta, you know, go that extra little bit. Let's go over to the stove and watch Mama mash these out. So y'all know what I'm talking about from before, okay? Let's flip you. So there they are. What you looking for, Mama? I was looking for that spatula, but I guess it's I in the dishwasher. Oh, I put one up in the drawer. So you let them fry just a sec. I think we could put another one in there. Yeah. That'll be plenty for us right now. I think once you go mashed, you're going to be out of room. I don't think so. Here we go. Reminds me of cookies, Mama. Mm -hmm. Take a fork and crisscross peanut butter cookies. Oh, those are so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to squeeze one more in there? Of course she does. Of course she can. Of course you do, Mama. There they go. There they go. Now they're going to fry just like a hamburger. And you just let them fry. There's some mashed potatoes too big. Are those done, Mama? Yeah, I haven't turned them on a little low. I just now turned them up. Uh-huh, look at that. We're blurry? Tell oh. me we're not blurry. You know, I've seen other uh, creators talking about their stuff's freezing and they're blurry and having issues. I saw um, Barb on the shabby tree. She was dressed like Elsa. Now, I ain't dressing up, but she was dressed like Elsa because she said, if my videos are going to freeze, I'm going to dress up like Elsa and be frozen. Oh. Wasn't that cute? Because she's having the same trouble we are. That's the key, if you'll open those. Yes, ma'am. Elsa, I thought that was cute, Barb. You'd be good. Elsa is the blonde headed. The blonde frozen one. Let's open some peas. Now, once you get your can up around there, that can will stay. Because it's right where it needs to be. Mom, if you'll hand me some brown sugar, I'll make up a little topping for your meatloafs. And we'll uh, have sauce. Yes, brown sugar. Now that click, did y'all hear it? That means it's ready to go. You reckon we should fry that or freeze that? Or you want to freeze that? I shouldn't have made up so much, should I? No. I mean, we can make it for leftovers because I'll eat it for two days for meatloaf sandwiches. Meatloaf sandwiches. That's just some sweet peas. Y'all call them English peas. We call them sweet peas here. And all that's going to get is a tinge of salt and a little bit of butter. And we call them buttered peas. Delicious, nutritious. I don't know if it's nutritious or not, but it's, it is good. The butter makes it better. And make them critter proof. I know they're going to the garbage, but I still want them to be good. I want them to be good for my fellow critter family. Now then, I'm just going to make up a little bit of 
Remember, these canisters, people say, John, I can't open them. Press and pull. When you close it, press to close. If you press the middle and pull, it comes out every time. Put my readers over here. I was sitting here this morning reading over my Sunday school lesson. Before Sunday school holidays. So let's open up this sauce. This is the tomato sauce that will be poured over top. And, um, mm, it's so good. This is kind of like a Creole sauce, if you want to call it that. But it's just what, it's good. It's, it's brown sugar, ketchup, a little bit of onions, a little bit of Worcestershire. And let me go find it. I that red velvet right there. I'm almost going to care. Sure. I'm going to show y'all. You need a whisk? Um, yeah, let me show y'all these right quick. I want you to see the full experience here. I know we're doing a lot of running around. I know it means make anybody sick. But there they are. Those have been turned. Look how beautiful and brown they are. Those are meatloafs. Those aren't hamburger patties in case you're just joining us. That's the red tomatoes you see on That's top. the red tomatoes. There's the peas going to be coming on. The potatoes are starting to boil. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to make the sauce to go on top of the meatloaf. And it'll be ready right when Mama needs it. For two reasons. Because we want to be ready to eat and for another reason Talking in trouble if I ain't got it ready. Yeah, I don't believe that. Yeah. This is one 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. And it all about come out. This is delicious whether you're doing a loaf or whether you're doing individual um, Meatloaf patties like this, or if you're just doing them in a butt pan, uh, in a muffin tin, and you want it for um, for the crispy of the edges, because if you do it in a muffin tin, it's all corner piece. If your family's into them corner pieces, there you go. This here is just some Worcestershire sauce, and I'm gonna put. I'll measure it for y'all. I'm going to put two of these. Not quite a tablespoon, but six things. This is just ketchup. And I'm going to put One, two, about four of these. Generously deepened of those. And then for brown sugar, I'm going to put about two tablespoons. Now back to my chore board, and I'm going to slice this onion extremely thin. Yeah, John. Look at that. Thin on one side, thick on the other. The struggle's real when you're trying to level it up. I cannot slice an onion thick or thin. It's going to be one or the other on either end. We do have a mandolin that makes that not a problem. You can slice it what you want. Do I get it out and do it? You know, I said I was going to do that. I said, I'm going to learn how to use that mandolin. I said, I guess I still could. But I ain't yet have a... No, you I have no idea. I said I was going to... I think the mandolin sounds special this month, isn't it, Mom? Uh, or it was. It's changed to it's the 
I need to get with my director and say, your mom's director. Maria, if you're out there, you can come in. Now, I know there's onion in the meatloaf, but this is the sauce. You want it to be like all things that we do. Usually, whatever I bread it in or cover it in, I make it very similar to what it's cooking. So that was just enough to do this. This is the Southern Secret. Same things I put in the meatloaf. Very little, but enough. This is a little bit of the meatloaf seasoning, just a sprinkle of it. You want to mimic the flavors that you've already got going on, but it gives you a good flavor and a good taste. Parsley just for pretty. And flavor, it'll help. Little black pepper. And because we're using tomatoes, I'm gonna to put a little sprinkle of salt. Can y'all see that? Take my word for it, that's what's been going on over here. Get all my seasons lined back up over here. Give this a good whisk, whisk, whisk. You can see how pretty it is. Now I haven't eaten off that. I'm just putting it in here to stir it in. Now I'm gonna give this just a taste, see if it needs a little more brown sugar. need a tinge more. Might not need it, but I want it. So I'm going to put maybe another tablespoon in there. So I'll probably put three tablespoons of brown sugar. And whisk it up. It's delicious. Let's try again. Stop. It's delicious. It is absolutely delicious. If you haven't tried it on a meatloaf, try it. If any of that you don't like, leave it out. You're through with this, sir. I'm through with everything. Mom, I'm retired. <laughs> I'm cooking another thing. Oh my goodness. I'm going to go and drink coffee and watch you cook, Mama. You're so sweet. You don't know what I do without you. Well, I don't know either, Mama. Especially since you can't drive. I'm her chauffeur. After tomorrow, I probably can drive again. Hopefully. Probably can, Mama. But guess what? I'll still be happy to chauffeur you anywhere you want to go. Anywhere you want to go, I'll take you, Mom. I guess we can put him up. Now, there it is, folks. Rich, thick, delicious. Now, normally, what I would do with this is I would put it in a kettle and I would boil it good. And get it good and bubbly. And it was just all those flavors would marry together. But since... Oh, looky here. Mama has struck over here. What? I thought it was just going to freeze that. Oh, I fried it. Let's good. check her out. I was wondering, what? You ain't gonna freeze that, are you? There's our light. I want you to be sure to see that. Not really, it's just Lord Square the camera light. Mama's brought out another smithering of meatloaf. That's to finish it up. Uh oh, I knocked it. Can I squat and get it? No, I'll get it. No, I'll get it. Oh, independence is struck here. So there's our peas. 
They're boiling. They're ready. Mashed potatoes. They just have to stop it. Now, Mama, are you ready to pour your sauce over your meatloaf? That's what we're coming with. I can't see it. We can't just see it. We can't just see it. Uh huh. I'm gonna have to turn it up. Mm -hmm. So normally I would boil that. Save some for your oven. I'm coming. But because I'm putting it in the skillet, we're gonna let it simmer good. It doesn't have to be boiled. Now folks, that's fried meatloaf. All you have to do now is let that do its thing for about five more minutes till your potatoes are completely done. And that's beautiful fried meatloaf. Now what's good about fried meatloaf different than a loaf? Well, it's already out in single serve portion. It's browned on all sides. So you have that, you know, brownest flavor. That's what you like. And I love that. And it makes perfect meatloaf sandwiches for the next day. Um, I like a loaf of meatloaf, I really do. But I'm telling you, fried meatloaf is probably my favorite way to prepare. If someone said, you can only prepare it one way from now on, John, I said, okay, let's go with fried. And it's uh, fast. That's one good thing about it. A regular meatloaf in a regular oven is gonna take you an hour and 10 minutes. Used to when you was little, you'd say, I said, Oh goodness, I've burnt the meatloaf a little. I need that part. I need Love the burnt pieces of the meatloaf. Well, they really wouldn't be burnt. They were just good and charred. I mean, it was just delicious. The flavor is phenomenal when you have that dark. Oh, look at that, how rich. See how beautiful and red that turns? I love it. Love it. It's delicious. They know two us about it. And what it does is it marinates in all those flavors. But it's quick. It's also cooler. We didn't even fire up the easy back today. In the summertime. In the summertime, when we talk meatloaf, we're talking either Micro Pro in the in the oven, and the and the how you know that Micro Oven, Microwave Oven, or we're talking fried. We're not going to bake a meatloaf in the summer. Or it's not. And nine times out of ten, we'll stick it in the Micro Pro oven because we can do it there in twenty minutes on the Micro Pro grill. Put it in the microwave oven. But if we're going to do <clears throat> A loaf, when you have that loaf of meat, and y'all know how meatloaf is, it's a thick loaf. It takes a while to cook to the center of that meat. And uh, it takes an hour, hour and 10 minutes, usually 15 sometimes. So you're cutting down on time and there, it's no heat for your kitchen. It's wonderful. And then that sauce, when you make that sauce up like that and that brown sugar and that onion and a little bit of Worcestershire and it, kind of marinates in there together and it goes over that meat. You won't find any finer in any diner in, in the world. It's so good and you can make it at home. If you, even if your family don't care for meatloaf, maybe it's just when they slice it and they see that gray meat and they're like, I don't care for that. This is different. Let's roll up through here. I think I froze you. I'm gonna flip the camera. Looks very good, John and Mama Hill. Oh, from Minnesota. Hey, Karen. How's things in Minnesota today? The oven does warm up the kitchen in the whole house. It does, Bridget. And if you're, I'll tell you another little thing. A lot of people don't realize if your kitchen's next to your living room or your hallway, and that's where your thermostat for your whole house is, it's going to kick that AC on quick. Because that's what it's judging by. It's saying, boy, this house got hot in a hurry. So that makes a big difference. I'll tell you, in the wintertime, which I have no complaints at all. I'm perfectly content and very happy. In the wintertime, when Mama's sitting in the living room and got the fireplace on full, 
the whole house gets really cool because the thermostat says we warm. No yep. sense to kick on. And uh, Mom will say, it's so cozy and warm in the living room. And she'll get up and go to another room. She'll say, it's cold in here. I say, your, your fireplace heated up the thermostat. But that's fine with me. I'm good with the thermostat being heated up. Uh, because it gets down to 69 or 17 the rest of the house. And my to mashed potatoes now, Mom. Mashed potatoes. We're not having any bread today. We overdone on starches yesterday and day before both. We had bread both days. And that's... Let me have that for my peas. Ooh, I can't stand that. That's against the rules. In fact, we got leftover mashed potatoes in the refrigerator. You know what we could have with them, Mama? Tater cakes or potato salad. Or potato salad. I would love some potato cakes, though. Some good old... Fix them my way with onion and a little bit of flavoring in them. You can fix some plain ones too, Mama, but some with some good onion in it. I love tater cakes. Do y'all know what a tater cake is? It ain't got nothing to do with a cake, really. It's just a little, it's like a salmon patty, potato patty, some people call them. But they sure are good. I love them with just a little bit of ketchup. Love them with pinto beans. Uh, I love them. But anyway, Look at here, Mama's got a mess. We can't miss an opportunity to get us to a mess. Mama, it's all of your hands. Show us. No, we're not going to show all of that. <laughs> oh, I torment Mama so much with stuff like that. She is, Mama is a perfectionist, and when something like that happens, she's like, mm, this is a mess. It's not really a mess. It's just cooking. It's just cooking. That's just what it is. A hot mess. A dumb, then. Would the butter get too warm on you? Yeah. Now you can heat your cream of your evaporated milk in the microwave. Out of the can. Please take it out of the can. Um, but you can heat it to keep your potatoes warmer. That's one reason we serve it in the pot we cook it in. We're going to serve it in this. There ain't nobody here today. We ain't putting on a dog, as they say. You know, if we had company, we'd get all of our little mama's fancy little serving dishes out. and we try to put on the dog a little bit. Because you do that with company. Unless it's certain company. Put on the airs. If it's, if it's company that, uh, you know, lives at your house. You know, some company lives I at your house. I can't see that pepper. Is it coming in? Right oh, there? mama, it's black. I thought she was wanting that that way. No, I couldn't see. Have a little salt. It needs a little salt. I put some salt. Okay, in. okay. Uh, but you know, sometimes companies just family and they're just there. But you know, you lay out the pots with them. But you know, if you have somebody coming over for Sunday lunch, then you're going to eat at the big table. You're going to do all those things. And you're probably going to take your taters up in a bowl, put your little pat of butter on them, let them melt on the top so it just sort of swirl them around with a spoon. Make them just right. Uh, but this is just home eating right here. This is just, and see how soupy these are? John, you've run that potatoes. Your mama's gonna kill you. Look how soupy, look how soupy they are. You put too much cream. Nope. This is the way you want them because I know she's gonna let that meat love for another few minutes. And these potatoes are gonna stiffen as they sit here. So I wouldn't wanna serve them in this, this, uh, this smoothness or this liquidy. But I'm gonna show them to you when we get ready to eat them. And I'll tell you why I say, when you get them just right, like you wanna serve them, go ahead and put you a little bit more um, evaporated milk or cream or whatever in there. Because as you can see, in this a few seconds we've been talking about it, look how they thickened already. See? Now, Already, they're servable. They thicken that quick. So, go ahead and thin them down and they'll thicken right up. If, if we wait five more minutes to eat, they'll be almost too thick. I guess I'll leave that here. I, uh, yeah. 
unsweetened tea. You're wanting that or you're going to drink coffee? Unsweetened, please, Mama. I'm drinking both. You're going to drink both. Both coffee and tea. Mm-mm. Is that a plastic masher? Yes, ma'am. That is, and the Tupperware has their masher. And why don't I use the Tupperware masher? Have it. This is the I Tupperware masher. So old. This is one we've used for a hundred years. This is a Tupperware masher, and it's handy. It's better than that one because that one's got the two sides, the metal thing. This one you can get right up in the corners. You can scoop it out. This would be the best masher to use. And plus you can use this for a ladle. It's multifaceted. But we've been using that for a long time because of the non-stick cookware that we use. And this is Tupperware, it's non-stick as well. Um, but if you use any kind of non-stick, but yeah, a, a good plastic masher will serve you well. Thank you, man. A little bit of y'all's sweet tea. Unsweet, cause we can't potatoes and peas. Y'all's sweet tea unsweetened. Y'all's don't sell sweetened tea. They, uh, that's just the name because it's southern and it's catchy. Y'all's sweet tea. It comes in packs with no sugar, so you can make it all unsweet if you like. Our rule of thumb is our peach tea. We're gonna sweeten it. It just tastes better. I, don't, I don't, it's just the way it is. Um. But the un, the other tea, the regular tea, we use the, we buy the decaf regular, and Mama keeps us, Mama keeps the pitcher sweet and unsweet and peach at all times. Just about it. We keep three gallons going. Here. That's ridiculous, John. It's the truth. But the flavor of the tea, not the sugar, but the tea is so good. I love it. I love it. It's refreshing. Um, I would never make sweet tea, probably. It would be like cream in my coffee. You all may come on here tomorrow and say, he's got cream in his coffee, and he said he didn't do that. I hardly ever do it. Hardly ever do I do cream. Every once in a while... I'll do a flavored creamer in the evening. But now in the morning, don't mess with my coffee. Black coffee, straight out of the percolator, please and thank you. Of the evening, sometimes I'll put a little flavoring in it or something with cream. Sometimes it's just, it's like sometimes you just want a piece of cake for no one, no other reason other than you just want it. Sometimes I will put a little sweetener in my tea. Uh, but I'll be content just to unsweet tea all Let's the time. Let's get the meatloaf out all right. Well, sure, Mama. I could get it out with a with a two prong out. fork. This will not work. This is fine right here. Uh -huh. This will. Let's get it off. Everything's off, so we're ready to eat. I think got the dishes washed up this morning that we used earlier, and stored in the micro, stored in the micro, stored in the in the uh, dishwasher until we get ready to run it. We're starting yeah. to do bad with the dishwasher. Mom, are you getting disposed to the dishwasher, or uh, not yet, you're just giving up that we're going to have to try it, or what's yeah, the deal? Because you have you filled it up Friday. I run it, emptied it, got it ready to. And then it was ready to go this morning. So when I finished up the dishes this morning, I put them in there. Some things I don't put in the dishwasher. First of all, Southerners do not put their iron skillets in there oh, ever. Wow. You get I would never put my chore board in there. I'm washing it by hand. Um, I don't, Mama's, uh, now the, all of the Tupperware, I do put in there, these kittles. But now Mama's got some that she uses that's town craft. It's got a plastic handle and plastic handles on, so I don't put those in there. But all the Tupperware They're older are, than you are. They're older than me, and they need a break. <laughs> But now, like all this goes in the dishwasher on the top rack, all of the kettles, the pots, everything, the Tupperware goes in there. That's the reason I like to use it, because when we get through today, I'm gonna rinse and stick it in there. Do y'all rinse your dishes? Somebody said you're washing them before, or do you just shove them in there? I think you're allowed to shove them in there, but I kind of rinse them a little bit. Is that crazy? Do I need to quit that? Is that foolishness? Y'all tell me, I'm sure you will. Somebody tell me. <laughs> 
big items you hand wash sandy yeah i do too like a big old kettle or something's gonna take up the whole dishwasher i'll go ahead and wash it but now mama's getting the hang of it a little bit a little bit not really i'm proud of you mama you're making every stride i've got my necklace on that uh that Christopher made you. Yeah. Isn't that, that beautiful? I heard people compl complimenting you on it. Yeah, it's pretty. Got a little jealous, Christopher. I ain't gonna lie. So I said, did Mama, did John buy you a new necklace? And she said, no. Uh, one of our <laughs> Coffee Time family made that for me and sent it to me. You got your feelings hurt. No, not really. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it was a wonderful treat. Look at the meatloaf, folks. This is how it comes out. This time we'll do a flyover. Ready? So this is the way it comes out, and that's what you're going to get. Now look here. I'm going to, can y'all see? I'm going to give Mama this beautiful piece right here. Look at that. Now that is beautiful. And it tastes so good. It does, really. Fried meatloaf. We love it. Let's set y'all back down. I'm going to bring y'all up so you can see us from a distance. Mama's in the other room eating. No, I'm not. Mama, you look you like you're way I... in there. <laughs> I'm way. not that far away. It's like objects are closer than they seem. Like in the, way in the other room, Mama. Look at you look so tiny back there. I am tiny. I know. <laughs> that made me laugh. You are tiny, little thing. A little speck of a thing. Look at those mashed potatoes now, folks. I'm going to show you this. When I put them on my plate, look here. Now, those were soupy, and some of y'all were probably thinking I was in trouble. But look here. Those are perfect for serving now. Absolutely perfect. Even Mama would we're say so. We're getting ready to eat. You know what I forgot? What? I was going to boil down years of corn or microwave, but we'll have them another time. Another time? Nothing, Mama. We'll have them for supper. Well, we might have them separate. Mama bought that corn, you know, she cut it off the cob. So she, she saved us some ears. And she was going to do that with our lunch well, today, yeah, evidently. Snap out of it. Evidently she was. Mm -hmm. But now let me just tell you a little something. I'm a simple kind of eater. If you'll fix me an ear of corn this evening about 0530, that's supper. I'll, I'll be glad with that. Oh, yeah. Plus, there'll be meatloaf left. So I can have meatloaf, corn, and peas, and mashed potatoes, and our ear of corn for supper. Maybe we're going to have it for lunch. And I no, just... don't you worry, Mama. We'll be great, because that, that ear of corn will cook in the microwave in about eight minutes. It'll be good by itself. And we'll just set me corn. Yeah. Let's bless it, Mama, so you can start eating. Dearly Father, we thank you for this wonderful meal. We thank you for these precious hands that prepared it, dear Lord. And we just ask you to bless it for the nourishment of our bodies, dear Lord. And to Lord, we just thank you for everyone who's gathered here today. And we thank you for uh, the love and that the, you gave us, dear Lord. And you sent your son to die for us on the cross, dear Lord. And we just pray for each and every need and each and every hurt. Every prayer request that's out there, dear Lord, we just pray that you'll bless it, dear Lord. And we just pray for a hedge protection around each and every one of us, dear Lord. And watch over us and lead God direct us. your name we pray. All right, Mama, give that meatloaf a whirl. Somebody might have got too many spices in it. Somebody? Who would that have been? Oh, let me say I'll no give you all a bite. Let me to say no name. See, look at all that chunky goodness and that rich sauce. Very good. Absolutely delicious, Mama. Mm -hmm. Folks, that's just like downtown. That is just like downtown. Meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and peas. This is our standard, what we have, without an ear of corn. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so that's the reason you probably didn't think about it, Mama. That's right. Mm -hmm. this is all sweet tea, unsweetened. This Are you doing unsweetened? Yes, sir, I've got the same as you. Well, bless your heart, Mama, I'm so proud of you. Well, the meatloaf with bread and peas mm. and potatoes is all starchy. I figured we better not go with the sugar wrap. <coughs> <coughs> Listen to Mama today. This is the same little woman who slipped over there and made gravy the other night when we had 14 starches already. <laughs> what are you doing, Mama? I was trying to... Oh, that's your napkin. My napkin. I don't want it to go away. That meatloaf is so good, Mama. Mm -hmm. Even if you did make it in a small bowl. Yeah. 
Maybe that's the secret to good meatloaf is putting a small bowl. I wasn't intending to make two skillets because I was just going to have that one while I did for it. Well, you overdone it. I'm sorry. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Well, you can do it. I ain't afraid that it's going to go bad. We'll eat that for supper. And then I'll turn around and eat for lunch tomorrow. Like, I ain't never had it in a week. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that... In school, this is what they used to serve you. Meatloaf, potatoes, and peas together in a roll. That, that's one thing... That, yeah, it was back in the days when I was in junior high. That's one thing that never goes bad here is meatloaf. I told y'all this before, but I'm going to tell you again. Folks, you don't have to. Mama will back me up on this. <clears throat> if you make a meatloaf and you overdo it and you make too much and you've eaten meatloaf sandwiches and you've done all you can do and you're like, I hate to throw the rest of that meatloaf out. You can take a whole big chunk of meatloaf, put it in a kettle, mix it up, add you some beans and some tomato sauce and add you some chili powder and it makes delicious meatloaf. And you never know there's a meatloaf, or that's delicious chili, and you'll never know there's a meatloaf in there. I proved it to Mama one time. We had eaten meatloaf, we made a huge meatloaf, and we had a big old chunk left. And I said, I'm gonna make chili out of that. And she said, oh, it'll taste like meatloaf. That won't taste good. And I said, Mama, you won't even know that meatloaf stuck in the middle of that chili pot. <laughs> what was it, Mama? It was good. Did you taste any side of meatloaf? No. No, folks, you don't. The chili powder. The chili, the kidney beans, the pinto beans, the tomato juice that you put in there. And tomatoes. And a little bit more onion if you need it, but the onions are in there. <clears throat> but any of that and the tomato, you just have a fresh pot of chili. It's delicious. So if you overdo your meatloaf, meatloaf can turn into chili. Looks delicious. Yes, look. Love cooked apples. I love cooked apples, too. We've got some cooked apples. We need to do some apple pies, Mom. Oh, wow. That apple's ain't gonna like that long. That doctor tomorrow may say not cook much. <laughs> no, he won't. If I pay him enough, he might. <laughs> you can also make great meatloaf with ground turkey. Mmm. We don't have ground turkey readily here. Uh, Donald. Let's see what this is saying. Oh, well, thank you, Nancy. Um, we don't have ground turkey at our store usually. Hi, John and Mama. Lunch looks delicious. It's been a busy week. It has been a busy week here, too. Is July not one of the busiest months? You can add taco season and use it for taco. Oh, Mary, I bet you could. That'd be great. Mm, that would be good. Because it's the same stuff, folks. It's the same... Hamburger meat and onion and seasoning. Enjoy your Sunday, you too, Lisa. Am I the only child? I sure am. I couldn't stand any others. Kids get along. <laughs> no, they don't. I love kids. He's full wrong. But I'm the only child. Uh, Mama tried and tried, and then she ended up with me. What did you always say? Well, why go on when you get to the best? <laughs> Mama tried twice before me and once, once after me. No, you got it backwards. Once before me and twice after me? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. You're shocked that I tried twice after you. <laughs> oh, well. I said the good Lord knows I just needed one. That's right. You'd, all that fighting would have got on your nerves. Would you have Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, they'd have been trying to say stuff and take your place. Take my place. I couldn't be the bouncy child. <laughs> what if you had a sister? I might have liked a sister. I always wanted an older sister. Mom says, that's a little impossible. Mom says, that's impossible. I said, Mom, I want an older sister. My friend had an older sister. 
<laughs> and you loved her because she does stuff. And she done all kinds of stuff. And she could drive. And she'd take us places. And I thought, that's what I need as an older sister. Ooh. Didn't want no younger one, but the older one would have been wonderful. I needed an older sister. You think you could work it out now? No, I don't think so. I couldn't then, so I can't say them. Well, I guess it would be an adoption kind of situation. But she should have to be in her mid-50s. Are they older than you now? Oh, mercy. <laughs> You wouldn't let a sister be over you now, no way. I'm not. Sometimes I can use the help, Mama. What, taking care of me? Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. We're just acting a fool today. Anyhow, we're going to go. Y'all have a blessed day. We're going to eat this meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and peas. And then this evening, we're going to throw an ear of corn in there. Maybe. Maybe not. Sometimes we plan on another meal. And it don't happen. So that could be tomorrow night's supper. You'll stick around tomorrow. Lord will we'll see us tomorrow. And we'll uh, be cooking or talking. We've a busy day tomorrow, so I don't know. Cooking or talking or... Going to the doctor. Doing something. Say goodbye, Mama. Goodbye, Mama. God bless you. Son. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye-bye.